Hey everybody, and as usual for the Let's Look At series recently, welcome to something that is completely different from anything that I've ever done before or anything that I ever thought that I was gonna do. This is gonna be a Let's Look At of UDraw Studio Instant Artist. If you're not familiar with the UDraw, let's talk a little bit about what is probably like this generation's version of like the N-Gage to a certain extent or the Virtual Boy. Or, I don't know. It's just, it's a console peripheral. It's basically a controller that THQ came out with, and it's pretty much largely responsible for THQ's recent financial troubles. I mean, to call them recent financial troubles makes it seem like, oh, you know, I only have 50 bucks and I need 100 to get to the end of the month. This thing put them like $100 million in debt. What it basically is, is imagine like an Xbox 360 controller combined with a tablet. So it's kind of like, like an iPad. I'll, I'll put a picture of it up at some point during the video so you can see, probably around right now. Uh, so it's like an iPad with an Xbox 360 controller kind of shoehorned into the sides of it. So it has a D-pad and it's got face buttons from the Xbox 360 controller. It almost looks a little bit like the Wii U controller, but like a really low rent version of it. Uh, and instead of a screen in the middle, it actually just has a drawing tablet. So the entire purpose of this was to allow you to draw, uh, like high quality tablet style art on your TV. How I came to discover the UDraw, or how I came to own it myself, I went to Future Shop yesterday, for those of you who are not familiar with Future Shop, it's like a Canadian version of Best Buy or Fry's, I guess, depending on where you live in the rest of the world. Uh, and these things are notorious for not selling. There's something like 1.4 million unshipped or unsold units of these, just kind of hanging out in warehouses. Luckily, my local Future Shop happened to have about 30 of them, uh, discounted from about $80 down to $30, and I picked mine up. The, like, the $30 was scratched out with the Sharpie, and then there was just a $5 written on in black marker. So I picked this up for five bucks, and there's no way I could have refused that, given uh, the potential for hilarious videos. So this is the UDraw. Uh, I'm making this video because A, I'm probably the worst artist of all time, and B, the UDraw, in my experience at least, is probably the worst way to do art of all time. So this should make for some funny videos. So we're do this is the game that comes with the UDraw. I also have another game where it's Pictionary Ultimate Edition or something. Something tells me Ultimate Edition probably means it's just going to be the last version of Pictionary, at least that we see from THQ. So I'm navigating right now just by touching my stylus to the uh, kind of touch screen on this. Again, the touch screen does not light up, which makes drawing on this uh, exceptionally difficult. And this is art school, so I want to reiterate before we get into this that I am an awful artist, but nothing in this video is going to be fake. Like, I'm not going to be deliberately herp derping with my drawing. Like, I'm going to do my damnedest to draw as best as I can. And the humor should come from the fact that the you draw is a horrible drawing peripheral, and I'm a horrible artist as well. So we're going to try to draw a teapot here. I think, ex explore drawing a teapot using the Chiaro Skuru technique. Alright, that seems easy enough. I will say, they do a fairly good job uh, of tutorializing exactly what you're supposed to do, but the interface here and the game itself is absolute dog shit. Alright, so this is Remy. I'm gonna talk over Remy because I don't have any sound on my end right now. So he's gonna teach us how to draw a teapot using a technique called Chiaro Skuro. Italians use this method during the Renaissance to create beautiful paintings. Well, I'm gonna use this on YouTube. To create we'll probably less than beautiful videos. Crayon. Okay, so we'll start with the dark terracotta crayon on a canvas filled with medium terracotta tone, tone overlaid, with overlaid with the grid. Let's begin. All right, so there's our terracotta grid, and I am going to assume. Oh, do we, do we have to do anything? Do we have to color in the grid? We do. Okay, so we're starting here, and basically this is like a glorified version of paint. So I'm just moving the stylus around. That was quick. I thought I would actually have to click on every single grid, but I only had to click in the corner. Uh, so you can see I've got all sorts of tools up here. I've got this paint can. Got a pen, airbrush, paintbrush, chalk, eraser, there's other stuff as well. We can also like, uh, like apply effects, uh, and there's like stamps, basically clip art that we can use. I'm not sure what this is, maybe just the colors menu, yeah, the palette menu, and the tools menu, or media menu. Anyway, let's move on. So we've got our terracotta Fill base the done there. The Fill in the shape of the teapot, use the, use the grid to help guide, guide you. This is where the magic is gonna happen, I'm guessing, ladies and gentlemen. Details. Use the grid to help guide you. We're starting towards large, rough shapes and working towards the small details. Okay. So I'm gonna try to fill in the shape of a teapot. Hopefully, you know, the game does a very good job of keeping a picture of the actual guide object up there, but the problem is, what if I wanna draw the spout of a teapot and I'm just like, oh, no, I need to, I, you draw, I need to see where the teapot, oh, okay. So I guess we're gonna start down here and we're just gonna fill in the rest by memory. So the grid method is something that we learned a little bit earlier in this uh, peripheral. In art school, they automatically choose um, what you, uh, the tools that you have to use. So this is me just pressing the stylus. The stylus has like a weird little pressure attachment to it that indicates to the console, I think, uh, how much pressure you are applying 
to be honest with you, this probably looks terrible right now, but this is uh, by far, I think, the best I've ever done. So I can't even see the picture anymore, so I'm going to take off for a second and just see. Alright, so I want to draw like a spout. It comes up like this. Alright, that's sort of a teapot. You can, it looks like a lemon fish, which is something that doesn't exist. You know, when I was three years old, I wanted to be an artist, and when I went to university, I got a degree in biology. So just by calling that a lemon fish, I betrayed like both of my childhood interests. But hey, you know, YouTube Let's Play is calling. So, we're just gonna fill all this in. I can't stress enough how awkward this feels. Uh, basically, in case you didn't notice from the picture of the U-Draw we saw earlier, there's actually like a, a wire attached to the pen, so you're not, it's transmitting the information I think through the pen, not through the actual tablet itself. I can't verify that if it's 100%, but otherwise I don't understand why that wire's there, unless it's just so you don't lose it. So oftentimes the wire just gets caught, uh, which makes it borderline impossible for you to do things and messes you up a lot. I'm just gonna draw the handle as well. I'm not even sure if this is matching up with the grid anymore. Let's take a look at our drawing here. You know, if I didn't know what that was, I would probably say a shitty elephant. Uh, but knowing what it was, I can say, yeah, okay, maybe that'll be a teapot. We're only on step 7 of 29, squint so let's see what we got here. Squint to the photograph of the teapot. We learned the squint look method earlier, too. Uh, look at where the darker the shapes are within the teapot. Rough, Rough them, them in, in by, by sketching, sketching with, crayon. with crayon. All right. So I'm going to basically just copy exactly what he did, because I have no... Oh, my God. His looks so much better than mine. Okay, so I'm squinting and I'm saying darker is over here for sure. The squint method is supposed to make it so you don't see fine detail. Instead, you just see like coarse uh, kind of trends, I guess, or patterns. So we can see that it's like darker over here. And it's a little darker up here as well. And then it's a little darker on the top like so. Alright, dare I say that this step may have actually improved this drawing, believe it or not. Just make it a little darker up here. There we go. Okay, beautiful teapot. Again, I'd like to stress, I am actually doing my damnedest here. I know I'm terrible at art. You guys have seen the painter videos. Uh, well, probably many of you have not, actually. But this is me doing the best that I possibly can. Okay, the shadows should be shot. They show where the form is gradually turning away from the light. Show me how to do it, Remy. Alright, so he's going to gradually darken the object in. I am probably not going to gradually darken the object in. You know, to be 100% fair to the U-Draw, I have seen some pretty amazing things done with it. Uh, but I've also seen some, like, absolute garbage things. Even on the game's mar- or the peripherals marketing itself, there's just, like, a cavalcade of, like, awful drawings on the back. And it's like, you can create anything you want! Most people just choose to draw dicks, but whatever. If you're an unbelievable prodigy, you could probably make this work. Uh, so I don't really know what I'm doing here. Is this softening the shadows? Maybe. It feels so unnatural because if there was an, an actual screen on the U-Draw, I understand that would have been expensive and, you know, the peripheral probably still would have been a disaster in and of itself. Um, but if there had actually been a peripheral on the U-Draw, or sorry, a touch screen or view screen, I guess, now, on the U-Draw, like the Wii U, I could see where I'm drawing, but instead I'm just kind of There's playing it by feel, which makes things very, very difficult. Okay, so we're just going to draw some more shadows here. I'm just, I usually don't listen to Remy. Instead, I just watch what he does. Wow, this is where things fall off the rails. Normally when it gets, starts a little abstract, I can make it work for a little while. Uh, once we get into the point where we're making this into an actual, like, real human object that could be used for something, uh, things usually don't work out so well for me. So that's our teapot so far. Uh, I believe our next quest is to draw in these shadows down here. So I'm just gonna, like, trace a line. That's what our first shadow is gonna look like right here. Like so. And I definitely need to darken the edges around the teapot, because right now it just looks like, you know, somebody smashed a baby's head on the ground or something, and this is all its brains leaking out. Oh, wah, wah, oh, get over it. People die. Okay, here we go. That's a beautiful shadow so far. Uh, sometimes also the you draw just sort of hangs a little bit, which is great when you're, like, tracing a line with the stylus, and then it's just like, oh, sorry, we had, like, too much shit to process can't run it through the Xbox 360 processor. I had something like this for Super Nintendo when I was like 10. It wasn't Mario Paint. Don't tell me how does Northern Lion not have Mario Paint. Not know what Mario Paint is. I played a shitload of Mario Paint with the Fly Swatter game. Don't you worry about that. Um, so there's our shadow. We have to create the lip of the teapot now. This part is, yeah, that's good. 
We can undo that. I forget how, though. Oh, just the back button on the 360 controller. Yeah, that'll do it. To be honest with you, the buttons on the controller actually feel like kind of good. Like, the D-pad on this controller actually feels like... Better than the default Xbox 360 controller D-pad. Not the rotating one, but better than the default one. I almost feel like I should, if I was playing in fighting game tournaments or something, I should, like, pick this up and carry it around with me. Like, yo. Yeah, I'm a Ryu player. I use the U-Draw tablet. What's it to you, fucker? Anyway. So far, so good, I would say, on this one. We're just gonna trace. Oh my god, it's a fucking disaster. I'm not gonna go out on a limb and say that I could draw a teapot on paper. But I assure you that drawing it on paper would look better than it is right now. There we go, okay. And then we want, like, the lip to be over here. It almost looks like a teapot. It looks more like, like Aladdin's lamp or something. Alright, I'd say that's pretty good. So we're gonna continue onwards here. Fill in the shape of the dark, Fill in the shape of the dark background behind the, background behind the teapot. Okay, that's easy enough. Look at the shapes and this is this is what's gonna give it the contrast, and then the contrast is really gonna make my teapot pop, I think. Alright, Remy, quit showing off. Everyone on YouTube knows you're awesome. Okay, so we're gonna just fill in the grid. So it starts from like here. Oh fuck, what have I done? I've already botched it. It's gonna come up like this. And I guess we can probably just use the fill tool, so we'll just try to trace around the teapot. So far, so hideous, but... You know, we're getting close to the end of our beautiful drawing here. There we go. Making sure to get all those fine details accounted for. Uh, that one's gonna need some work, that's for sure. Uh, and then we don't even want to go down here, so I don't know why I came down here. I guess I just got high on Tracer. Come on. Okay. And then we need the line to be traced like here and here. And then we should just be able to fill that in with this paint bucket here. So let's drop that bad boy in. Alright, beautiful. It looks pretty good, now I'd we're say. We're gonna draw in the light. I've selected a low opacity crayon, crayon with a basic light value the of the terracotta color. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Squint to see where the light is hitting the teapot. I'm gonna guess watch right about here. Now watch as Remy light softly light. builds the color, and then watch as I completely fuck it up. Why does his look so much better than mine? That hardly seems fair. I think the problem is that this guy's not drawing this shit on a U-Draw. This guy, like, painted it, and then they're just using the, the like, Photoshop draw effect to make it look like they're doing it right here. Okay, I get it. Show off. How do I make the terracotta base? I think that's what's really gonna make this pop. Oh my god, this is a fucking joke, okay. So the light is coming, like, here. On the teapot. Swam. <laughs> Just dawned on me, like, I looked at this for a second and it was like, this is a teapot? Like, this mass of just terracotta crayon is supposed to be... Uh, a teapot? Alright, whatever you say. So we're just gonna roughly draw in this stuff here. It feels weird because there's like a lag time between when you input the motion and when the motion shows up on screen. So if I look on the, uh, the screen, it's like totally out of phase with what I'm actually doing. Like by the time I'm moving it to the left on the screen, I'm already moving it back to the right in real life. It's almost like I'm using the heaviest crayon known to man. This is the worst drawing I've ever made. I can't believe this is the one that's going to end up going up on YouTube. Bob Ross, I am not. Okay, well... We gotta color over that black. Is this... Teapot, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like a ghost just got cut out of black construction paper and then left on top of a big Look pile of glue in a kindergarten class. On the teapot. Oh my god. The There's so little left for you to show me, Remy. I do, here's what I need to do, I think. In order to at least salvage this, I need to take like a pen and go black uh, and then at least like trace some outlines here. Maybe salvage it at the last second. Salvage is probably a strong word, but we're just gonna draw in T. I'm a little teapot, short and amorphous. Here could be my handle if I was anything resembling what I'm supposed to be. There's the body of the teapot, and here's the whatever. That's... that's... okay, amazingly, am I wrong, or does this look substantially better? I feel like this looks substantially Excellent. better. 
You've all right the light this finished drawing is a work of art you heard it here first folks this remember this is your painting it won't, it won't look exactly, exactly like my sample, sample. no he thinks it's worth saving all right so this is the original versus our magnificent creation there's the original and there's the amazing painting you know the teapot within the teapot symbolizes the layered uh Matrushka doll nature of everyday life in modern society. Fuck you. Okay, we're gonna save this. Just to show you guys that I'm not, uh, like, hamming it up for the camera, basically. We're gonna exit here. And I'm gonna try to get to my gallery. I've never gone to my gallery before, but I have saved a few paintings. Uh, so you can see what I've tried to do, at the very least. And, and I'm not just, like, totally derping it up for YouTube. So where's our gallery? Uh, right there. So I've only got three paintings. Sure, we'll go. They don't belong in a museum, Indiana Jones. They belong on a refrigerator at best. So we'll take the refrigerator, and it should have our three paintings. All right, so this is probably the best painting I've ever done. It was the first painting I did in the game. Can I open it up? Yes, I can. Uh, navigation via the touchpad is absolutely horrible. So I don't really want to see this being painted in real time. But, you know, let's play a little game where uh, we'll guess what this is supposed to be. And hint number one, it's not a blockery floret. So we're just gonna let it go. It is a little bit like painter, so you know, I'm sketching it in here. This is when I really, I was trying my hardest. It was a very simple drawing to do. Uh, I wish there was some way to make it go faster. Can I just hit A? Nope. Uh, is, oh, there we go. So we can speed up the time via the stylus here. So let's crank this up to, oh, we can only go as high as eight times. I wonder if we can pick it up and drag it. This is gonna be an exercise in futility. All right, so what do you think that is? You think it's, uh, like an adrenal gland on a kidney that's gotten sepsis or something? Nope, that's uh, that's a leaf. That's a leaf right there. Uh, I did my best, didn't color it in that well, but believe it or not, that's like by far my best drawing. Yeah, let's display that, that's really nice. Uh, this is a terrible way. What is this, new painting? This is a terrible way to uh, showcase photos. Why don't you just let me zoom in on them rather than like going through this nonsense. There's my teapot, obviously. Uh, what about this one? Which I just selected. Yeah, boot this one up, please. This is uh, impossible to tell. I'm not fucking with you when I say that this is exactly like what I tried to do. Like, I tried to make this as best as possible. This is supposed to be, like, these are three hedges. And this was like a landing or a planter that they're on. And there's some trees over here. And then there's the sky. I tried. So, you know, if you buy the Udraw tablet, if you're lucky enough to have one of these beautiful pieces of artistic machinery. Uh, probably don't rely on the art school to turn you into a great artist. Every second that I spend with the U-Draw makes me feel like I'd be better off just having a pen and a paper and then posting the pictures on the internet. Believe it or not, I think the teapot might be my best drawing. There's something kind of abstract about it that I, I like. You know, relatively speaking, compared to all the other ones. Uh, but, you know, Instant Studio Artist, or Instant Artist Studio, uh, is not just a one-trick pony. It's not just the art school, ladies and gentlemen. There is also Art Camp, which I've never touched, uh, but there are some games in here. I'm going to use the D-pad to navigate. And I'm thinking that these are probably going to be just like standard shitty like iOS or like Wii U virtual or eShop games right now. Um, so we could, do, we could have a coloring book. We'll just check this out for a second because I could see this possibly being useful for, for children. Again, they, they make you navigate through like a terrible combination of the d-pad and the stylus. I guess you could use the stylus 100% if you wanted to. Let's get some prehistoric photos. We got T-Rex. Yeah! It's this fucking Triceratops here. Almost called it a Stegosaurus. I think YouTube would have had a collective aneurysm. And we're gonna have a coloring book here. Uh, I guess we could just cheat and use the paint bucket here. This will by far be the best picture I ever produced. So we're just gonna fill in the body of the Triceratops like this. Again, had something exactly like this for the Super Nintendo. Loved every second of it, by the way. There's that Triceratops. Let's give him... Uh, do we, are there any accents we need to give him? We can give him, like, yellow toenails if we want to. Oh, the fine control on this. It's taking, like, all of the strength in my deltoids to keep it within this tiny, tiny square. Thank God we're not doing this in a primitive way, like on a mouse and keyboard, right? Oh, fucking... Whatever. You know, that's good enough. He's on the sand. Uh, and, you know, there's some rocks over here, which we're gonna need to go into gray to get. Oh, yeah, all the custom palettes are so good. This makes me want to play Trivial Pursuit, to be honest with you. Yeah, give me this one, the monochromatic one. And we're gonna make some rocks over here. 
So, you know, safe to say, like, an, an ASMR video, this is not. Uh, I am not Bob Ross, as much as I would like to be, and as much as people tell me they enjoy falling asleep to my voice occasionally. This is painting a pretty horrifying picture of what prehistoric life was like. Just a desert volcano. Uh, and we obviously want to get some good lava going up in there. So we're gonna go with an orange, perhaps like this. Yes, give me basic palette 5, please. Thank you, assistant. Uh, and we will click away. And then fill this bad boy up. Now, if I tried to color this in by hand, it would look nowhere near as good as this. But, you know, this is my way of demonstrating, it's my way of being fair to the you draw, maybe. And saying, if you're a kid, you know, maybe this is something that, uh, you could actually have some fun with. Like, it's better than putting your kid in front of Gears of War or something if they're, if they're really young. I'm not gonna get into the violent video games argument. Uh, but what I will say is that this is definitely a, a very young child friendly device, if you happen to find one. Also, it's very budget friendly. Uh, due to the fact that THQ will basically take any kind of donation. That's by far the best drawing I've ever done. It's not even a drawing. But uh, let's play some more of these games in here. I'm really interested to see if they have kind of like weird primitive touchscreen interaction here. It's what this feels like to me as a whole is like this feels like a device that came out the year after touchscreens were invented. I want to re check out Tilt Maze. Tilt and paint your way through each of the different mazes. This thing as far as I know like this peripheral does not have a gyroscope in it so I don't think I have to actually pick it up and tilt it. Uh, but let's try Tilt Maze, oh, Tilt Maze 1. Not Tit Maze 1, that's something completely different. As I take a sip of my U-Draw flavored coffee here. It actually does have a gyroscope in it, I had no idea. Okay, so I'm gonna slot the pen in here. Pick up the Wii U controller version 0, 0.0. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I was just making sure, okay. So we're gonna, it, I can't believe this shit actually has a gyroscope in it. You know what? So far, at least, it actually controls fairly well. This is a primitive game. It's something I would never uh, want to actually spend time with by myself if it was not within the context of this weird kind of curiosity flavored video. Uh, but I, I had absolutely no idea. So I guess this indicates that the Udraw did have some other potential uh, beyond simply being like an artistic device or a device that's only themed for drawing. Uh, but Wow, why didn't they advertise this more? Like, I, I realize that this is not necessarily that innovative. With this, U-Draw came out in like 2010, end of 2010, I think. And the, of course, the Wii U controller, and I believe the six axis PS3 controller have already had this kind of control in them. But still, like, who gives a shit about being able to draw? Like, I can do that on my phone with my finger way better than I can do it with this shitty stylus on this shitty controller. The fact that it had some kind of tilt functionality is actually maybe a little bit useful. Although I guess, you know, now that's kind of all for not. This kind of reminds me of playing like Mutant Blobs Attack. This is by far the most fun that I've had with any kind of interaction with the U-Draw so far, without question. And of course, as I'm doing this video, keep in mind, I'm not doing this video like in a traditional Let's Look At way. Where I'm like, should you buy this game on Steam? Should you not buy this game on Steam? Uh, this is just a, a video basically, you know, catered to the audience of mine who likes to see me play weird shit. Which is great for me, because I love playing weird shit. Uh, and, you know, there's not much weirder shit than the U-Draw, and especially like within the context of the gaming industry, this is kind of a weird uh, curiosity in the sense that it, it, it's kind of related to current events. Like, this is one of the reasons, the fact that THQ invested so much money in developing and manufacturing this piece of garbage is the reason they're in such trouble that they are today. Uh, I'm only gonna do one more maze here. I mean, this is obviously made for kids, basically, but it's still fairly fun in its own right, I guess. The gyroscope seems a little coarse, shall we say? The fine control doesn't seem to quite be there, but still. Uh, I shouldn't say the gyroscope, it makes me sound like a fucking idiot, but uh, the tilt control, shall we say. Tilt sensitivity. But yeah, that, that's, that's the main reason. Like, when I saw the U-Draw, first off, I was like, five bucks. One day, this could be worth money. There's gonna be some asshole as dumb as I am, but substantially richer, who's gonna be like, the guys now who pay like $400 for ET cartridges that were supposedly buried in that landfill in New Mexico is gonna be like, the U-Draw was responsible for THQ's bankruptcy, I've gotta have one, 500 bucks. So I was like, wow, just dollar signs in my eyes. I probably should have bought the whole stack. There were literally like a, a pallet of 30 of them. Um, but yeah, let's quit here. That was one reason why. I wanna check out some of these other games too before we leave, just to make it a comprehensive, you know, instant artist studio look at. Uh, but the other reason was like, man, I've absolutely got to check this out just for a video because this is probably some of the weirdest shit I've ever looked at. And it's been a week of weird shit, I mean, between Seduce Me and all the other stuff we've looked at. 
All right, text your reflex by splatting aliens. Do you have what it takes? Probably not, but I'm gonna try anyway. I imagine I'm just gonna draw between aliens or touch the aliens with my uh, stylus nib. If your hand is hit too many times, you lose a life. Splat 100 aliens and defeat the boss to advance to the next level. This is fucking Mario Paint. It's a substantially more difficult version of Mario Paint. By the way, Mario Paint came out what, like 1993, 1994? You know what peripheral that game came with? It wasn't a shitty fucking touchscreen, it was a mouse. That gave you like fine motor control. You know, the same peripheral that we've used for like the last 25 years with respect to navigation on our computers and other devices. Uh, so I think, you know, Nintendo won THQ Zero on this one, although, you know, time will tell, I guess. Maybe in 20 years we'll be using the U-Draw for everything. We'll have like a U-Draw enabled oven. We'll just draw our recipe cook, serve, delicious style. Alright, so this is like a much worse version of the uh, Mario Party, or sorry, Mario Paint game. I'm gonna back out of here as soon as I can. Back button? Can I, I need to, oh, I could just use the A button to hit these guys too, which is way easier than tapping them with the stylus nib. But it's also probably causing some terrible vibrations. Start button? Okay, quit. The last thing I want to do, because the very worst feature uh, of the U-Draw is it's like tracing fidelity. So I really want to see how dot drawing works, which I'm assuming is just like uh, connect the dots. So why don't we take something, you know, fairly simple. We've got animals and other. I guess the rat doesn't count as an animal, nor does the bunny or the- Oh, we gotta do the unicorn, right? Okay. So I'm gonna try again. I can't stress this enough. I know there's gonna be comments for- And also, like, this shit is so small. Uh, I know there's gonna be comments that are like, Northern Lions just faking it for YouTube. I'm not! I'm not faking it for YouTube. I'm seriously gonna try as best as I can here. I don't know how to make this less wide. Um, so I guess we're just gonna go with it as is. Cause it seems pretty big. How big is it? That's enormous. That is w far too large. What about our like tools menu here? Can we do something there? I want to alter the pen. I guess not. Okay, here we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Yeah, so far so good. This thing is just too thick. I'm actually not tracing horribly, believe it or not. Where's 30? Okay, there's 37. Oh, 38's back here. I've made a huge mistake. That was also the U-Draw lag. You saw it. 45, 46, 7, 48. I never had patience for this kind of art when I was a kid. I was like, just let me create something. I know it's a unicorn, I don't need to- I can go on the internet, search unicorn, and see a better picture of a unicorn. You don't need me to create one in your kindergarten classroom. But then again, when I was teaching, I used this shit as like a time waster all the time. And I know there's people out there that are gonna be self-righteous. Yo, you shouldn't be time wasting when you're a teacher, you should always have a meaningful lesson. Get over it, your kid's like six. They're not gonna create the Magna Carta on day one. Is that seriously the end of the drawing? That's it? Well, that obviously has to be saved. So, come down here. Save it. Alright, uh, this has been a very strange let's look at of the UDRAW tablet itself. Even though you haven't really seen it. Let's listen at the UDRAW tablet itself, which I think is terrible. Uh, and uh, let's look at of UDRAW Instant Artist Studio. Uh, it's, it's weird. I don't know what to say about this because it's not like I can give you a recommendation to go out and buy this. Uh, this is a, a one-off very unique curiosity within the uh, modern video gaming landscape. I'm, I'm happy to own one myself just because it's fucking crazy. There's only like eight games that were ever made for this. Uh, and I'm looking forward to checking out the only other one I could find, which was Pictionary, which was also literally, it was the same thing as the U-Draw. There was like a stack of them and it had like $10 printed on the price tag. Inevitably, that was 50 when it first came out. Uh, and then that $10 just been scratched off and somebody just wrote a $1 on it. Anyway, this is the U-Draw. Uh, I don't know what to say about it. I'm a terrible artist. It's a terrible peripheral, but uh, hopefully it made for some entertaining videos. But in any case, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.